Hello guys and welcome back to Bearham Engines. So, great news, as you can see, I'm back. Managed to get back for a day or two before the Christmas break. Um, still got the chest infection diagnosed by the doctors. So, made really good progress um, this week, I think. The boys have, and last week when I was off for a day, Paul's done really well, so just gonna head over there now and um, see how he's getting on with this Renault. And my breakfast, mate. Hello, Paul. Ain't got time for that, even if it is your break. So, you need the fuel to eat. Yeah. So how are you getting on over here, all right? Doing very good. Bouncer rods, bouncer pistons. Um, the pistons are actually out, about a gram, 1.2 grams. Right, okay. So I've bounced them a little bit. I'm just taking a little bit of weight out of the heavy ones. And now we've been less than half a gram difference. These rods are down to 0 0.3 grams. Right. Difference. So less than half a gram, both. I mean, the main information we wanted was the um, bearing clearance. The bear, um, it was the, the tolerance really on the bearing clearance, wasn't it? Yeah. If and you the, plastic gauge it, that tells. And the end float, which what I was hoping would be right, is about right. Yeah. So we're allowed, basically from the manual, we're allowed uh, a sound to two thou main bearing clearance. Yeah, which is quite a wide yeah. tolerance really, isn't it? Um, and we're 1.5, so yeah. we're banging the middle. And end float, we've got seven thou, and he allows six to 11 thou end yeah. float, so we're happy with that. Someone did mention in the comments in the last video about the clear engine that the bolts are they stretch. Okay. They're not. I stretch. You can, I think the stretch bolts, but you can reuse them. So you need to measure the length of the bolt. Oh right. Okay. So there's a big 11 M11 bolts over there. Yeah. Um, as long as they're not any longer than 131.5 mil, you can reuse them. Oh okay. And there's, for the M8s, it's, it's, it's a different length. So as long as we mention them and we're in tolerance we can reuse the right bolts but so it's not like your typical alley engine where they sort of say you've got to renew everything like the bmws so it's no. all steel bolts there's no alley yeah. bolts or anything like that um, oh that's good news but then. we do have new m11 bolts anyway so we probably might as well use them if we've got them yeah i was going to say if um if we've got them we may as well use them but it's yeah. it's handy to know isn't it that they do give a tolerance so you can reuse them yeah happy with that mate done really well thank you chap so that's really good, um, more than happy with that. Uh, but we, before we go any further, we're gonna have a bit from Isaac on the six cylinder Rover engine. So here in the vice, I've got the rods and new pistons for the um, Willys Jeep engine. I've just got this piston on the rod and this is a bolt type gudgeon pin piston. So there's a flap inside on the gudgeon pin that locates in that bolt and that allows the piston to move on the pin but the pin stays where it is get it in the soft jaws get that bolt out so this is the pin itself you see it's got the flat there uh, or the sort of gouged out bit and when it's in the rod that bolt just sits in there like that, stops it moving. Right, so there we go, we've got the piston on the rod there. So now we should just be able to put that bolt in there. Yeah, just thread it in. Just do it up reasonably tight with the spanner. So it's obviously designed like that to make it very easy to replace sort of in a field, you know, you aren't fiddling around with circlips and pliers. It just sort of makes the assembly a little bit easier. So there we go, that's all four pistons on the rods. Um, all that's left to do before we can build that Jeep is give it another wash, coat of paint, and John's got to grind the crank still. So I've also been just working on the Rover six cylinder today. Um, I've been getting the rocker assembly back together. We do have a new rocker shaft to go in there. Um, tried to put it in earlier. This is a new shaft. Um, they're actually about a thou too big, which makes them a little bit too tight. So I think John's gonna try and get around that, probably by turning them down ever so slightly. So I just sort of dummy built the rocker shaft back in there just to well, it's, we needed to figure out that he's got a set sets of washers, thrust washers in there, in there, and there. And I got one just here. 
that I didn't know where it went, but I now know it goes in between those two. In a minute, I'm going to strip it all back down and then put the new rocker shafts in there. So I'm just going to start knocking out old rocker shafts. Just do that by using a long bit of brass and a little hammer. There we go, there's the other one. You see it's quite a lot worse on this longer shaft. Quite a lot more wear. See that step there? Yeah, these definitely need to replace him. So, got the short rocker shaft ready to go. Basically what John's done is he's just given it a good old polish. Um, you know, take off any sort of little burrs and rough bits or whatever. So hopefully it should just slide in there now. Nice bit of oil on there. Rub it in. And then in the manual, it's telling us these oil holes with the flats need to face the cylinders. So it needs to be that way around. And then you've got the locating hole there, which locates, there's a, a little bolt hole there, and that will locate in there, in that end. So yeah, let's get that one in. So we've um, managed to get the, rock, the new rocker shaft in there now. So there and there. Uh, there's obviously the long one and the short one. And then we've got these retaining bolts that hold them in. And on my first attempt, I ended up making that little bolt look like this. So that wasn't ideal. Sheared off in there. Um, I managed to punch a little hole and then drive a Torx bit in there and it wound back out and then all I had to do was stick a magnet in the end and pull that bit out and then John has made some new little retaining bolts so yeah this one's pretty much done now um, just got to get the other retainer in and push this the long rocker shaft just up a little bit further and that one's done well everyone I've just come back from the doctors He's just give me some antibiotics. I've got a chest infection. Um, but that's enough of my complaining. Um, I hope you're all the same as me, full of the Christmas cheer, because this guy certainly isn't. Um, right, what today's little rant is all about um, is regarding this the guy that's supposedly going to take us to court for the gearbox build that we did. Now... <sighs> The reason for this, really, is I'm a little bit disappointed and a bit, a little bit upset, really, I suppose, with this. It's not very often I say this. I mean, I do, I've done loads of videos with sort of warranty issues and what have you, and I let it usually just sort of blow over me head, don't get too emotional about it. But this particular um, letter that we've had, this is a response letter to our solicitor's letter to him, um, and he wants us to respond within 14 days. So... Yeah, I'm a little bit bothered by this. And the reason is, guys, if you've watched any of the previous videos um, on this particular issue we've got with this gearbox, um, you will know. But if if you haven't watched any, just to recap, basically, we did a gearbox. We rebuilt a gearbox for a customer. Um, and it was all sort of done over the phone, really. Um, so this was, I suppose, prior to us getting involved with too many of these videos on YouTube where a lot of you guys suggest down in the comments that we should have everything on email and record everything and this, that, the other. You know, the way the world's going these days, to be honest. Um, gone are the good old-fashioned sort of gentlemen's um, agreements over the phone now. You can't sort of have any decent relationship with a, with a customer. Everything has to be recorded for your own sake. And it's getting a bit sad, to be honest. Um, but this letter here is quite evident from the original conversation I had with him on the phone to to this response with this letter it's obvious that he's playing the system he knows damn well that um, we haven't really got any record of the the conversations we had so he's just playing the system he's trying to recoup back some money for I don't know for for money that he's lost generally I mean he's certainly not going to have lost any money um, through the build we did as I've said to you before, we rebuilt the gearbox. He, he said in this letter, 
Um, he's made out that he's completely clueless. I've said that, you know, we recondition gearboxes um, and we haven't, re we haven't done it properly. We haven't replaced everything in it. Where the original conversation actually went, um, it was brought up in a telephone conversation between myself and him um, because we had an engine in here being done. So we'd done, prior to that, we'd done two more engines. We were doing another engine for him. He was more than happy. You know, we went out on, our way on a couple of occasions to help him um, regarding issues that were nothing to do with us and hardly charged him anything. So he was a bit of one of those anyway. And as I say, he brought up this conversation while we were discussing an engine in the ad in here. And he said, do you work on gearboxes? And I said, well, not as a rule. No, we don't specialize in them. I've done a couple, one being my own, but I'm certainly not an expert, but what have you got? And he said, well, I've got this gearbox. Um, I want to travel around Europe. It works, but it's a little bit noisy. Just wonder whether you could have a look in it, investigate, see if there's, you know, just peace of mind, really. So that's exactly how it come about. So he bought it in. I took the top off, ended up sort of stripping it, having a look. And I rang him up. I said, look, from my opinion, um, it's up to you, but everything looks in really good order, to be honest with you. Um, it obviously needs a good clean out and that, but the bear, even the bearings and that look good, so it's up to you. Well, when we can, when we come to discuss the actual cost of the rebuild, now rebuild can mean anything. Rebuild can mean take apart and put back together, um, depending on where you sort of what you're rebuilding, I suppose. Um, if parts are actually, you know, with a rebuild, with us, if we rebuild an engine, which we don't generally anymore. Um, if there's anything that's a bit iffy, we ring the customer up and we give him the option on what he wants to do, which is exactly what we did with this. We stripped it, had a lot. I've rang him up and said, look, my opinion is, you know, if you've got a bit of a noise in a, in a particular gear, all the gears look in good order to me. There's no chips. There's no this, that, the other. I said, but it could be where the gears over the last 40 years um, have sort of worn a bit uneven. So now you're getting a bit, a bit of a noise. I said, you could, you could put in a I put in a more modern oil in mine in a uh, and and sort of tried that and it worked in mine it shut it right up so you could try that but you know it was an unknown but here he's saying that I suggested that he did that I recommended I didn't recommend I just sort of stated that's what I did and that could work but it was up to him really um, I said you could put a gear set in it gear set from Quaife's going to be a couple of thousand odd quid he certainly didn't want to do that um and even when it come to replacing bearings, etc., he wasn't interested really. He even sort of disputed or begrudged paying 50 quid for a gasket set to put it back together. So that's what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, on here, this was all done over the phone. It was all agreed and all that. He's making out that he bought it back because he still had a noise. He didn't. He bought it back because he'd hit the shaft from behind, the selector shaft, um, and broke one of the selectors on the front you know, the front selector side. So that's exactly why he bought it back. Um, our second invoice proves that because it's got on there what we replaced and he paid the invoice. He's not going to pay the invoice if we'd have replaced things that didn't need replacing and he didn't know why they needed replacing. So, um, or if it was our fault, he wouldn't have. So yeah, everything he's putting on here, he's just playing the system really. Just irritating more than anything because, you know, if he... If he does get a solicitor and takes us to court, then you know what you know what it's like. They could turn around and say, "Well, it's one of them where the customer's right." You know, it's his word against our word. He's not happy with this gearbox. You're going to have to sort something out. Whereas the original phone call really was, as I described, you know, he knew exactly what we were going to be doing and what potentially he had to do or could do. It was entirely up to him. Um, he was the one that chose us to put it back together. The bill at the end of the day was about 300 quid plus the gaskets plus the vat. It weren't major, uh, but now he's trying to s potentially sue us for over 2,000 quid, nearly two and a half thousand pounds. So what that's for, I do not know. My feeling, knowing the guy, is when he bought his last engine to us, he, and we helped him out on a couple of issues. The reason we helped him out is because he no longer had any staff. He was on his own. Um, I think, I'm not sure whether it was the paint that he was sort of, he did, but the mechanical side, not a clue, not at all. So he was sort of leaning on us really to help him. Um, but my feeling is he's run into a bit of issues um, here and there. He's, he's out of pocket and he's trying to recoup money from wherever he can really. But, you know, he got an independent engineer's report on this 
gearbox, um, sent us that, sent us pictures, but the pictures resemble nothing like what that gearbox was like when it left here. So I'm not even sure whether it's the right one. Unfortunately, back then we didn't mark anything, so it would be his word against ours. So who knows, guys, who knows where it's going, but I think it's a sad state of affairs these days where that's you have to treat everyone like they're going to do you over you can't have any sort of human sort of contact with anyone and and gentlemen's agreements anymore it all has to be done like that and yeah i just think it's a bit sad really so um yeah let us know down in the comments what you think guys well, not to put a damper on any more of your day guys with any more moaning um just want to say a big thank you to isaac for nice explanation there on the six cylinder rover engine um, but until another video, guys, have a lovely evening. Um, like, subscribe, comment down below on what you think on that little discussion, and um, we'll see you again. Cheers, guys.